Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad that you came back. I've been garfed. Today we're going to be focusing on some real basics on how to get started with our crochet project. We'll touch on how to start a slip knot, how to chain, how to choose the right kind of yarn for your first project. You should be so proud of yourself for showing up today and starting this new journey and this new hobby. If you like what you see today, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Etsy or Instagram under the name Love and You Homemade. So let's get started. Okay guys, so let's get started. All you need are your hands. I did my nails for you guys. Mm -hmm. You'll need any kind of hook, anything you feel comfortable holding, and you'll need some yarn. So now for yarn, I would avoid anything too thin for your first time crocheting. This just tends to get really difficult to see and hold on to. I would also avoid using black or anything too dark because once you start making your chains, it becomes very difficult to see. I would also avoid anything too fuzzy because that fuzz or fur can get in the way. So what I'm going to be using today would be labeled as like a number four in the store. Um, it would also be known as like a worsted weight. And you can tell the difference in thickness from this one to this one. Now when you come home with your yarn from the store, you're going to find that it doesn't have this nice neat starting tail coming from the center of the ball. Um, you might discover the one that's wrapping around it on the outside first, but most likely your ball is going to look like this if you get it in like a Michaels or a Joann's. And I'll show you how to get your starting piece of yarn first. If you end up getting your yarn from a specialty store, or this one was actually from Peru and my brother brought it home from his trip for me, um, they will wind the yarn for you and then you'll have this nice neat little starting strand right in the middle. But for your store-bought brands, you might find that the outside tail will be tucked into one of the ends like this. And I never like to use this piece because it ends up just winding all around and being messy. So I go a digging, and I might have to do this off camera as to not embarrass myself and make a huge mess, but basically I just try to find the center here. And then I end up going in with my pointer finger and thumb, trying to find a little section that I could grab. Oh gosh, it's gonna be a messy one. <laughs> it's okay. And see, I pull this out. So now you can see that the yarn will start to come from the middle but we have to sort with this mess first. So I just end up either untangling it and draping it on the couch if I know that I'm going to use this amount right off the bat, or I will start to just wrap it around my ball just to get rid of the excess so that I could start with my nice clean piece. So this is what I end up getting to work with right off the bat, depending on how much of a uh, big ball that I pull out from the center. So I have my working end of yarn here, and as I work, I just kind of unravel a little bit to give myself some slack. And eventually, once you get through this little disaster, <laughs> you'll be coming from the middle and it will be a lot easier. They do make uh, these wooden bowls or sometimes ceramic bowls that could help hold your yarn and make it a little less tangled for you. And I could try to link one in my description or show you a picture later on. And it makes it very helpful, especially when you have one that's pre-wound from a, a, a yarn store. Okay guys, so I just always want to reiterate that once again I am self-taught, so things that I do may be different from something else that you've learned or that you've been told or instructed to do. And you know, it's okay to do something differently than what I show you. These are all just recommendations and things that I've found to be the way that has stuck for me or the easiest way for me. So right now I think we will work on starting off with a slip knot. So there's several ways that you could do this and it depends on the individual based upon their preference. So you wanna start off with your working end of yarn. And what I like to do is take my two fingers, leaving yourself a nice tail, and you just want to use your dominant hand to do the wrapping and you want to use your non-dominant hand to hold and pinch. So I'm kind of pinching the yarn with my thumb and my index finger. So what we do is take that loose end of yarn and wrap around and now I'm going to pinch 
right here where they touch. So now I have this kind of little lasso loop with that loose end or tail right here. And you can see that the tail just naturally wants to come behind and we're gonna let it. So now the tail is behind our little loop or our lasso. And then we could take our hook and we could just go behind that little tail. And now what we have is this. And we could end up pulling both of our tails at first. And then we just want to pull that loose tail to tighten it around the hook. And this is going to be an important foundation to start a lot of your projects. Now, if you think, oh, I didn't give myself a long enough tail, and this will become important once we need to either work this into our piece or sew it into our piece afterward. So you want to give yourself a little decent amount to be able to do so. So if you're not satisfied with your slip knot, all you have to do is slide your hook off and just pull those little pieces and it comes apart and you can start over. Now, if you're thinking it's just impossible for me to hold and twist and, and tie with my hands, let's try it on a surface, on a hard surface. So once again, we'll take our working end of our yarn and let's just make a little loop-de-loop. -loop. We could just make a circle like this. And so you see that tail is kind of going on top. Let me give myself a little longer. So now we made our loop-de-loop. -loop. We could pick up our little circle and slide that tail underneath. So we still have that loop or that lasso and we have our tail behind it. And we can just go ahead and take our hook and just kind of wedge it under there and trap our hook underneath that tail. And let's see if we can end up pulling. Yeah, we could also end up pulling while it's still on our, our surface. And of course you want to tighten that yarn to the hook. So you're going to take your little loose tail and pull that until it's nice and snug. So now another portion of crocheting that I notice isn't touched upon a lot in a lot of beginner videos is how to actually hold your yarn in your non-dominant hand while you're working the magic with the hook with your dominant hand. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I started off using my pinky and I would have the yarn kind of just loop around like this and now it's trapped and it's going to use your pinky as traction when you end up pulling to use more yarn. And then you could end up, I guess, just looping it around any other finger if you want to pinch and working this way. So this pinky actually gives you enough traction so that you can control the tightness or the looseness or the tension is what it's called of your piece. So I guess what I do now is kind of a lazy version of that where I end up just holding it like this and then pinching. They also make uh, rings that you could wear that you just kind of slide your yarn onto and then that controls the amount of tension that you're able to use. So whatever works for you. You just find what you're most comfortable doing. All right guys, so we could just end up practicing those things over and over again just to get comfortable, just to get that muscle memory going. So the more you do it, the more it's going to be ingrained in your head and more natural for you. And you'll just get quicker and quicker as time goes by. Okay, so now we learned how to hold our yarn, how to start our slip knot. Where do we go from there? So basically, a lot of projects that I've done, they'll start off with a chain. It's kind of rare where it would start off with, say, like a, something called a magic circle, which is also a very useful tool that I'll end up showing you. Um, but the chain is a very wonderful concept to lock down so that you can start doing more uh, advanced beginner or intermediate projects for yourself. Now, in order to do a chain, we want to make sure that we're not making it too tight or too loose. And the length of that chain is going to be determined by the thickness of the size hook that you're using. So you pretty much just want to keep your chains pretty uniform with the diameter of this hook. And in order to do a chain, what we end up doing is something called yarning over, where we bring the yarn over our hook. 
and then we end up sliding. We use that little hooker on the hook, little hooker, <laughs> very technical terms. <laughs> and you end up grabbing that yarn and you pull it through the yarn that was just on your hook. And now there's a new piece of yarn on your hook. And we made our first little Beba chain, little baby, so cute. And we can just repeat that. And now we'll do number two. So now you can visually see that there are one, two little chains that we're working up here. So you yarn over and you don't want to tighten so much that it's difficult to pull through because then you end up getting a different size chain and that will matter when you go to work back into that row. And you don't want to have it completely loose where you have all this extra slack jiggling around on your hook here and then you pull it through because now look look at that big boy so you'll just have a really loose or wonky looking project so you want to keep things consistent and that just comes with that tension that's coming from your non-dominant hand when i first started crocheting my tension would be super loose with my starting chain and so my scarves would end up having like this big loosey goosey end and then tighten to a more consistent width. So we wanna kind of avoid that, unless you want it to be intentional and, and your own, which is also okay. So it's actually so funny, there's an Irish superstition that anytime you crochet something, you crochet a little bit of yourself or your soul into your piece. And so you should always make a mistake to allow your soul to escape. So I thought that was really cute. And making mistakes is okay. And we're just here to have fun and learn and and create and get better if we want to. So your projects might start off by saying, do a foundation chain of 10 or do a starting chain of four. And so that is how we're going to determine the width of our project or just have a starting base. So you always want to do, start off with your slip knot, yarn over, pull through, not too tight, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. So now we have four little chain babies. And the reason, the way that you could um, identify them is by, you can, sometimes you could count the top little loops. Okay, let me take this hook off and make it a little easier. Oh, it is so wonky to count on camera. So we have one, two, three, four. And it's very important to keep count when you're doing crochet because a lot rides on having a, a specific count. This would be the back side of your work. So if you end up seeing that, it's not wrong. It's just different. And you can see the little one, two, three, four little bumps there. All right, success. We did our first video. Um, so if you have any questions, any comments, anything that you'd like me to touch upon further, please let me know in the comments or send me a message. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be bringing you some more beginner friendly videos and then we'll work our way up to some intermediate stuff. It's gonna get real fun and funky. Love you guys. Thank you.